everyone welcome back to my channel and this video will be my 2021 but as always it's more of a lifetime wish list so i've done this video two or three times in the past and i always like to start by reviewing my wish list from the previous year and seeing what items i bought what items i've taken off completely and what items have carried over to this year as you can see i've numbered my wish list to make items easier to refer to let's start with the items with with the check mark in the green box. Those are the items that I got. You can see number one, I got the Van Cleef Vintage Alhambra Mother of Pearl necklace. I also got number 13, which was a holy grail bag for me, the Hermes Kelly 28 Cellier in Epsom leather color gris etan. I'm using the exact pictures that I used last year, so you'll notice that I got the exact bag that I put on my wish list last year. Number five, the Hermes Hermes So Black Rodeo in size PM, which I had been searching for for over a year with no luck. I was so happy when my essay surprised me and I got it at the same time as my Kelly. I also completed my tea set. If you watched my London Heathrow haul, you know that I started collecting the Mosaic Platinum collection and I got the teapot at Harrods. But this year I also got number seven, which were the breakfast cups. And so now I have a tea set that serves for. Let me know if you're interested in seeing my small but mighty Hermes home pieces. And believe it or not, that is all I got from my 2020 wish list. I did get some wildcard items, which I will tell you about later. Let's talk about the items that I've taken off my wish list completely. Number three, the Saint Laurent collage bag in this beautiful anthracite gray color. When I got the Kelly in gray, I just had a feeling if I also got this Saint Laurent bag, when I wanted a gray bag, I'd always go for the Kelly, so there was no point in getting the collage. I know it's a different look. There are some outfits that the Saint Laurent bag would probably look better with, but I'm not into having a huge bag collection, so I'm willing to make a decision like this and not getting a bag that I still really like. I also didn't get number six, which is the Cartier Love Cuff. I didn't get this because I realized that the reason that I wanted the Love Cuff is is that I really wanted the Cartier Love bracelet. I love the look of that bracelet, but it will not work out for me because I cannot wear a solid gold, fairly thick bracelet 24 seven. And so the Love cuff was a compromise, but the reality is I want a bracelet. I don't want a cuff. And there are other companies that make beautiful bracelets. And if I really want a bracelet, I should go and get a bracelet instead of making a compromise and getting a cuff. The items with the question marks are items that I've taken off my wish list for now, but there's a possibility that they may return to my wish list in the future. So you'll see number four, which is the Chanel Coco Handle. I wanted this bag in either a red or blue, so a pop of color. I could not find a red with silver hardware or a blue that I liked. A lot of the bags that I saw in store didn't seem particularly well made, so I've taken this off my wish list. Some Sometime in the future, Chanel may produce a cocoa handle that I really like and I think is really well made. And so I may revisit this, but for now it's off my wish list. I've also temporarily taken off the Van Cleef Vintage Alhambra Five Motif Onyx Bracelet. I still want the Mother of Pearl. I plan to wear these bracelets stacked with my watch, my Cartier Justin Clue, another gold bracelet, and I was planning to interchange the Mother of Pearl with the Onyx. I'm just not sure that I need the Onyx. I have a feeling that I will probably end up using the Mother of Pearl all the time and the Onyx will just sit there, but I'm not totally sure about that because I don't own the Mother of Pearl bracelet yet. So what I plan to do is get the Mother of Pearl, see how that works out, and maybe the Onyx bracelet will go back on my wish list in the future, but for now it's off. So everything else that you don't see a check, an X, or a question mark means that it has been carried over to this year's wish list. And part of the reason those items have been carried over is that I decided to get what I'm calling wildcard pieces. And these are pieces that weren't on my wish list, but they blew my mind when they became available. And they would just be really difficult to get in the future. So there are only five of these items and I'll just go through them quickly. The first is of course the Birkin 30 Gold Togo Leather Gold Hardware. I asked for this when the 
Hermes boutiques reopened in New York City over the summer, but when you ask for something from Hermes, the chances that they have exactly what you want the same day that you ask for it is pretty rare even for the best clients and so i just think i had really good luck i just happened to ask for it at exactly the right time along with it my essay offered me that little nano oran bag charm i'm not really a luxury bag charm person but this looks so cute on this particular bag that i couldn't resist especially since one of my requests was the gold oran sandals so it's super matchy matchy I know but it's so adorable. So those three items were kind of a one-shot deal. I told you in another video that I had planned to go on a girls trip to Paris and London. Of course that wasn't going to happen in 2020 so instead I got a Bergen. My next wild card piece was this dark red Chanel mini. This was my unicorn red color. I don't know when another dark red with silver hardware would come up that I liked so I jumped on it. I'm really Really happy that I did. I had a huge reward certificate which brought down the price of this bag to about $2,700 before taxes. It made it worth it for me. The Chanel Mini was pretty similar in price to the Cartier Amulet necklace so I got the Chanel Mini instead. And lastly I got the Van Cleef 2020 Holiday Pendant which was pretty similarly priced to the Van Cleef Vintage Alhambra 5 Motif bracelet. And since the Holiday Pendant is is a pretty limited item, I decided to get that instead. Okay, on to this year's wish list. Let's start with the most random item, which is a Hermes horse paperweight. I've changed it a little bit. I wanted it in the crystal. Now I want it in the wood. Let's move on to bags. My first item is an Hermes Birkin 25. I've held off on requesting a 25 for the longest time for one reason and one reason only, which is the handle drop. Even though I'm a very small person, I've tried on a Birkin 25. I can get it all the way up to my elbow. It just takes finagling when you're wearing a bracelet or a watch and it's just impossible if you're wearing a heavy jacket or a coat. So that's what held me back for the longest time but I just can no longer resist how adorable this bag is. The good thing about Hermes Birkins and Kelly's in size 25, if they don't work out for you, they're not at all hard to resell. I always sell to an online consignment company and even with them taking a huge cut I still won't lose money so I'm willing to give this bag a try. I normally know exactly what combinations I want in Hermes bags but I'm much more open than normal with the Birkin 25 because this is a bag that I think will look great in a pop of color but as always my heart is in neutral so as you see I'm showing you it in a black with palladium and a gray asphalt the only combination I've ruled out is black with gold because I already have a Birkin 30 black with gold. But for the first time, this is the bag that I may be open to a brighter color. Unlike the next bag on my wish list, which is the Kelly 25. And this is a bag where I know exactly the combinations that I would want. I would either want it in black Epsom with palladium cellier, etoupe Epsom with gold hardware also cellier, or black Togo with gold hardware retourné. I'm not interested in a pop of color with a Kelly. The black Cellier with palladium hardware, I actually think I would prefer in a 28 size, but we'll see. I want to focus on testing out the 25 size, so that's all I'm going to request from my essay this year. With Hermes, I try to be really specific with myself, with my essay, and also in talking to you guys here about it, because because I want to hold myself accountable and really think about what I actually want. So I've told my essay in the politest way possible to please only contact me when the bags in the combinations that I'm requesting become available. I'm not interested in knowing or being
being offered bags in all of the different combinations that come into store because honestly if a bag in a combination that i know is really sought after is offered to me it might be really hard for me to turn that down even knowing that it's not what i want i think it's really easy for me and probably a lot of people to get caught up in the excitement of being offered a bag so to avoid that i'd rather just not know and only be contacted for the bags that i truly want those other bags may be someone else's dream bags and i'd rather those bags go to them speaking on what i actually want holds me accountable so if i end up unboxing an orange birkin 25 you'll know that was not my first choice i'm not saying that it's impossible to fall in love with an item that is not on your wish list but i don't have the means to collect birkins and kelly's in every color so a wish list is a great way for me to keep my eye on the prize i know this is not how most people deal with hermes they want their essays to call them and offer them different options i just don't need that kind of temptation in my life okay moving on the last bag on my wish list is a bag that's been on my wish list for at least three years if not longer it is the goyard artois bag it's still on my wish list for a couple of reasons this is a bag that i refuse to buy in the u.s the price difference is astronomical and two this will purely be a work bag for me and i have not stepped foot in my office in almost a year so i do think that i will definitely buy this bag the next time I go to rants, which may not be for two more years. So until then, it will remain firmly on my wish list. Let's move on to fine jewelry, which I am going to put out into the universe just like I did last year. It didn't work out for me last year. I'm hoping for the best this year that this will be my year of fine jewelry. The first is what I'm calling the alternative for my Cartier love bracelet. I told you why the love cuff is is not on my wish list and why the love bracelet is not for me. So these are a few alternatives that I've thought of. I haven't tried any of these on, so I have no idea if these would even work out for me, but the point is I want a solid gold bangle style bracelet. The first is the Bulgari B01. Next is the Cartier Clash bracelet. This I think is beautiful and very unique in design. The problem is it only comes in rose gold I think and I don't love rose gold. I need to try it on and just see how it looks with my stack. Next is the Hermes Calia de Chien bracelet. Another one that I'm not sure I'm wowed by just looking at it online so I need to try it on in store. If I do fall in love with it this may be something that I may wait to get in France if the price is much better there. The last one I'm showing you is the Roberto Coin Symphony bracelet. Bracelet. I think that I may have ruled this out for a couple of reasons. A, with yellow gold, I don't love diamonds. I prefer diamonds with white gold. And secondly, I don't think this bracelet comes in different sizes. I think it's a one size bracelet and the size may be equivalent to a Cartier size 16 or 17, which is way too big for me. So I'm pretty sure this will be out. If none of these types of luxury gold bracelets work for me, I am perfectly willing to go to a small independent jeweler and either see what they have there or get something custom made. What I don't want to do is go into Bulgari, Cartier, and perhaps they'll have just a plain gold bracelet somewhere in their store and I get something like that. If I'm going to pay the luxury price, in addition to fantastic quality, I also want unique design features that maybe other jewelers have copied but these are the original designs. I always love getting the original versions of things if I can afford it but if none of these work out I don't want a random bracelet from Bulgari or Cartier that looks like it can be from anywhere because otherwise I'd rather just go get an 18 karat gold bracelet from anywhere and save myself thousands of dollars. So that's my thought process in general about luxury fine jewelry as opposed to just regular fine jewelry which I also love and I have. Okay next on my wish list is the Cartier amulet necklace. Last year I put this necklace on my wish list in Mother of Pearl but I've become more and more attracted to the 
malachite. Malachite is a much more delicate stone, but I always take all of my jewelry off anyway every day. So I think what I will do is just go in store, try them both on, and just see what speaks to me. Next is the Cartier Justin Clue ring in the slim size. I've been wanting this ring for years. I keep putting this off because there are things that I want more and I know that I can always get this ring, but it's still firmly on my wish list. And then we have the Van Cleef Mother of Pearl 5 Motif Vintage Alhambra bracelet. I love this piece. Every time I go to Van Cleef, I try it on. Last year it got sacrificed for the holiday pendant, but I really want for this to be the year that I get this bracelet. So last up is a wild card item that I can tell you right now I'm not getting it in 2021, probably not in 2022 either. But as I said earlier, this is more of a lifetime wish list as opposed to just a 2021 wish list. And that item is the Van Cleef and Arpels Pearly Clover Bracelet. And I will be super honest with you, the reason why it's not on my wish list for 2021 is is because it's very expensive. I'm saying to myself, I can't get it because it's too expensive, but then I realized that that's not entirely the truth. The truth is that I'm not going to get it because there are things that I want more and I'm not willing to sacrifice to get this bracelet. So the compromise that I've made with myself is that if I go two years without buying any bags or any other fine jewelry, this is what I will get instead. However, right now there are still bags and other pieces of fine jewelry that I want. So I'm willing to forego this piece for now, but this is kind of a forever item on my wish list. I debated even putting on an item that I knew I probably wouldn't get for another five years on my wish list but as you guys know I'm very good at delayed gratification and patience. I absolutely love this bracelet. I've tried it on. My essay has this bracelet and she wears it so beautifully so I know this is something that I will enjoy. White gold with diamonds is my absolute favorite. I have looked at dupes of this bracelet. I have looked at similar designs and nothing really compares to it. So for now it's just really nice having a piece that I really really love and I'm willing to work towards. I will probably try it on 10 more times before I actually buy it and it's going to be so fun when I get it one day. So that's it for my wish list, guys. I think it's only eight or nine items but I love curating a group of items that I'm willing to work towards. I really love watching other people's wish list videos. Let me know what's on your wish list or if you're on YouTube and you've made a wish list video, please let me know. I'd love to watch it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.